This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. The mystery of all of this uh, amazing, fantastic thing that we're calling Hashem, the, the name is um, that he's hiding himself all of the time from us and making sure to tie all the edges and all the corners of our life and to bring them all in a very unique supervision that will make every normal and decent person in shock and amazed from the greatness and from the kindness of the Creator of taking care of our life in such a deep way and in such an inspiring way to bring us all to the purpose of having a complete faith. Now Hashem, the Creator, the one that we admire, the one that we love so much, the one that we think about every day and every night, the one that we're trying to connect ourselves to Him, is also while he is guiding us and while he is opening our eyes to see him and to recognize him and while he is teaching us the rules of his Torah and the obligations and waking us up to recognize him and to find him in our lives. In the same time he is working on hiding himself and on letting us feel that we are alone in this world and that we need to take care of ourselves and that we need to make sure to fulfill our obligations. In the same time that He's taking care of everything for us and preparing and delivering and bringing and, and making all this system work, He's working on hiding Himself inside those things and covering Himself completely from our eyes in a way that even the biggest believers of them all, once in a while, they're doubting Hashem's existence and they're questioning. And the main mission, the main, the main purpose of, of us human beings and especially the ones that have been chosen by the Creator to believe in Him and to find, find Him, the main mission of us is to have faith, to believe. And the faith is in the nights. Faith is not knowledge. Knowledge, millions of people can tell you, I know there is a Creator to the universe. Even science, even, uh, even, even, I say, Madanim, science, science. Scientists, scientists, even doctors, even people that uh, their mind is in, phys in the physical world, they can also, by investigating physicality, coming to the conclusion that there is a Creator to the world. But they're not believers. It will not going to take them to faith. They can understand it cannot be that this world been created without a Creator. <coughs> came out of the blue, out of some weird explosion or something, they will investigate and will find that there is a guiding hand, a, 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 a hidden supervisor that runs certain things in, in a hidden way. And they will come to that conclusion, but they will not going to take that conclusion and will run their lives based on that faith of an Almighty that is supervising on us with His merciful uh, love and endless love to us. They will not going to change their way of life because of the existence of that Creator. So knowledge is not the solution for people like us, but faith is. Knowledge is one thing, to know that there is a Creator, it's a fantastic thing, okay there is, but how it affects my life, this is something else. 
And that's faith. Faith is in the nights. Faith is coming to the person, challenging your knowledge when you are in darkness. When you are in those hard and difficult times of your life, that that knowledge, that knowing that there is Hashem in the world is not helping you, that's when you should believe in Hashem. That's when you should use your faith. The faith is something that is waking you up to follow the Creator in those moments that you cannot see Him, that you cannot recognize Him. You follow Him when your eyes are closed, when your eyes are been shut off by the Creator Himself. And the faith is in the night. What that it means is that we should believe in Him with all of our hearts when we cannot see Him. When we are facing those challenges, when we are suffering from difficulties, when it's not so clear that it's the love that runs the world, when it's, the, it's not so obvious that the, the kindness is the power that runs those engines of this world, in those hours, our faith is being challenged and we should choose to believe. That's the mission of our lives. Because there is no person on this universe, and not in this generation, and not in other generations, that was exempt from difficulties. Even the biggest heroes, the giants, the, the ancestors, the highest, holiest ones of them all, thousands of years ago, they been tested by the Creator in hundreds of tests hundreds on hundreds on hundreds, thousands of tests that challenged their faith. And only the fact that they wanted to serve and that they pushed themselves to try and to find Him and to not give up and not to lose hope and to strengthen themselves and to go and to talk about it and to consult and to think and to see how to find a way, how to serve Him and even facing the sea and lions from one side, and bears from the other side, and the Egyptians are running over them to destroy them, they are being pushed to that point of faith. That their faith in the Creator is being challenged, and they are choosing faith, and they're going into the depths of the water, ignoring all of what that the power of nature is telling them, you're going to drown, you and your children all going to drown, the Egyptians going to kill you, you're all going to suffer, they're going to drag you back to Egypt. They are counting on the foundation of the faith. They're counting on those memories that are still flashing from the past. No, but we saw the wonders but I remember that a few days ago I saw miracles and based on those memories, based on the miracles that I experienced a few days, a few years ago, based on those, now I'm going to walk into the sea, into the darkness and I'm going to cross the desert and I'm going to cross the sea. And then out of the darkness, out of the narrow ways, paths of our lives, suddenly Hashem is expanding. Those ones, the verse is saying, those ones that went in the darkness, they saw a great light. Only after walking in the darkness and not giving up on the faith, then you can experience the light. Then you have the vessel. If now you're holding a cup of water and it's full with amazing pure water, you're not holding a vessel in your hand. You're holding a cup that is full with water. You're holding a cup of water. It's not a vessel. A vessel is only after you're emptying the cup from the water. Now you created a vessel. Now you have the vessel to contain the spiritual bounty. Only after being empty. Only after that Hashem Barach is showing to you, like that the verse is saying on us, that we received the Torah, the wisdom of Hashem, from Him at the desert, in the desert, Mimidbar Matana, as a free gift. Only when you feel that you are dry and empty like the desert, 
and you know about yourself that you are nothing, that you're a zero, you're flat like the desert. You're not high like the peak of the highest mountains. You're not green. You're not blooming. You're not succeeding. You're nothing. You're dry. You're zero. You're flat. You're under the heat of the burning sun. Only predators and dangerous animals can crawl on you and run and hide between your cracks of your dry land. Only in that point when you will receive the Torah, you will receive it as a free gift. As a result of your humility, of being so humble that you know, I am zero, I am nothing. So when you will receive the Torah, when you will receive the wisdom of Hashem, He will show you His kindness, you will receive it in the right way. You will receive it with humility, like Moshe Rabbeinu. Receiving the Torah from Mount Sinai, on Mount Sinai, the most humble mountain, the only mountain that never thought, that thought never crossed his mind, that he will be the worthy mountain to receive the Torah on. No. He was the only mountain that knew for sure, that he for sure, not going to be the one. So Hashem chose him. Atem Amat. Hashem chose us because that we are a small amount of people, because we are the most poorest people of them all, because we are a weak nation and not a strong one. Hashem chose you to expose and to uncover the faith and the truth of the Torah because that He found points of humility inside of you. And now I'm talking about the individuals. Every single one of us that been exposed in a way to the Torah, been exposed in a way to the truth of the Torah, that miracle took place in your life <coughs> only because that Hashem, the creator of the world, found you worthy, capable of containing and holding that light of truth inside of you. What that makes a person worthy is his humility. In the moment that you become arrogant, that you think that you are better than someone else, that you try to overpower someone else, that you try to possess or to take or to, I don't know what to do with your power, with your wisdom, with your authority. In that moment, you lose your connection with the Creator. You can still have a long beard, a black jacket, side curls, a big dark kippah that blocks your brain from thinking, but it doesn't make you holy. It doesn't make you pure. It doesn't make you attached to the Creator of the universe. The Creator, Hashem Elokechem Emet, He is the God of truth. Think about it. The Creator is the God of truth. If you're lying, to your wife, to your friend, to your rabbi, to yourself, to your children, Hashem cannot be there with you. Because Hashem's nature is the truth. When you reach the truth, you reach Hashem. When you investigate something and you reach the truth, you reach the core of that thing, you reach Hashem. You reach the spark of life that gives life to this machine. And it's Hashem. It's Hashem's light. Hashem Elokechem Emet. And after we're saying it in Kriyat Shema, we're repeating that verse again and saying again, Hashem Elokechem Emet. The only verse that we're mentioning twice. Because we must take that truth and to carve it on the board of our hearts. You need to take them and to write them down and to rewrite them on the board of your heart. That those things, those words, Hashem Elokechem Emet, the connection to the Creator is, must be based on truth. Those must shine, those words must shine for us like the light of the moon in the darkness, like the light of the sun in the day. Because Hashem is close only to those ones that are calling Him with truth. 
And the person that is lying cannot stand in front of Hashem. The person that is lying, even to himself, even because he is afraid, cannot stand in front of the Creator. Because the Creator is the God of truth. He is the real Creator. He is the reality. He is the truth. He is what that gives strength and power and wisdom and grace and beauty and health to the creation. He is the life itself. He is the essence. He is the truth. He is who that He is. And He was here before the creation. He will stay here after this creation will finish its time limit. He was and He is and He will be. And we must join Him. The way to join Him is to accept on ourselves, to attach ourselves to the truth. To use verses, to use um, 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 words like yoke of heaven, to accept on ourselves yoke of heaven, lamlich al atzmenu ol malchut shamayim. Those are, are, are very nice phrases. Those are words. We must uncover those words phrases and to try to understand what the, what's the real meaning of all of those things that needs to be done by us. Okay, I saw people that were sitting and learning Torah for 10, 20 hours every day. People that had the power to sit and learn, they had the financial backup, they didn't have the financial backup and still they were learning. Their wife were pushing them to learn against the will of their wives they were sitting and learning. Many, 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 many examples that I can remind myself of, of people that were dedicating hours and hours to sit and learn Torah. But the truth is that when I saw those people, I saw that those people were not so lucky. Even though that I cannot ignore from the fact that they were sitting and learning 20, 15, 18 hours of Torah, people that are not doing basically almost anything except of learning Torah, but you see broken people and frustrated people that their faith is not so solid and not so stable and they can claim to be the biggest believers of them all but in ch time of challenges they can find themselves losing their mind because of a cup of coffee or a seat in the, sh in the Beit Knesset, in the synagogue, in the Beit Midrash. They can argue on money, they can be terrified from bills or whatever. Ch life challenges! So where is their faith? If after sitting and washing your eyes and your mind and your brain and your lungs and your kidneys with the water of Torah for hours and hours and you don't have the basic faith to remind yourself, I'm not talking about remembering, even just to work on yourself, at least that, at least work on yourself, to remind yourself that there are no people, that the Creator is dressing Himself in people, and he's the one that is supervising the world, and he's the one that runs the world, and he's the one that brings all those challenges, and that it's not allowed to scream on people, that it's not allowed to shame people, to abuse people, to hurt people, it's not allowed to ignore people. It's not allowed. All those things are, 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 are from the foundations of Judaism. Those are the basic rules that have been given to us by the ancestors, by the manners of the ancestors that we saw a life example from righteous people in those generations and in earlier generations. If still you're sitting and learning Torah and still you don't know how to behave, you still didn't work on your manners, you don't have the faith and the love, your face is not shining, you're not able to smile to people, you don't know how to have gratitude, appreciation, so where are you holding? What happened to all of those hours of Torah, to all of those masechtot and books that you finished one after the other, all the sudot mitzvah, where all the Torah disappeared, where all, where all the, the, the holiness of the Torah been disappear, disappeared? The answer is one. It's written that if a person, zacha, he cleaned himself, he is now zach, taho, he purified himself, and he is learning Torah, so then the Torah becomes to be a potion for him. It will cure him. It will heal him. It will give him strength and wisdom. But if the person still 
have not worked on himself enough, on his manners, on the way of the land, on Derech Eretz, on the way of him talking to people, on his attributes, and he have not purified himself enough. So, lo zacha, naset lo samavet. The Torah can become a poison, a lethal poison that can poison him and all of his beloved ones. And the Torah becomes to be the tool in the hand of the devil to destroy that person's mind, to drive that person's heart, to destroy his family. And it's written in the Midrashim that the biggest demon of them all, at midnight, he goes down to the well of the pure water of Torah and puts his impure hands into the water of Torah and in the morning the scholars and Talmidei Chachamim are drinking from those water, from the impure water that that contaminated demon filled them, contaminated them with the contamination that he had on his hands. And they're drinking that impure water and taking that impure water and running it to their students and their students to their families and everyone are being poisoned. Everyone are being poisoned. And why? Because people are not working on the main things, on the main things that the Creator wants us to work on. It's our manners. It's our behaviors, it's our generosity, our sensitivity to care about each other. It's to love each other. It's to be able to sit and to talk with your best friend, with your partners, with your soulmate, with your children. To be able to spend time with your family. You can run your life with that nagging and bugging thought of, I don't have time, I'm not fulfilling my obligation. And even when you sit and learn Torah, you're not able to enjoy the learning because you're so distracted. And you were hoping for so many years to be married, and now you find yourself married, and every time that you have the opportunity to sit for five minutes and to share the time and the space with your, lo with your wife, you cannot enjoy that because you're not fulfilling your obligation, and I'm not learning enough, and I'm not praying enough, and I'm not doing this, and I'm not doing that, and I have to take care of this, and I have to take care of that. And then you're being blessed with children, and you cannot enjoy those treasures that you receive, because you have so many things that are bothering your mind, and distracting your thoughts, and your rabbi, and their community, and now they're doing this, and now they're doing that, and what's going to be with you? And you haven't accomplished this. And you're not doing that. And you haven't finished that book. And you haven't finished that seder. And you're not doing this. And you're not doing that. Those impure thoughts are those thoughts that are destroying the purity of the water that you already have. Instead of enjoying what that you received already from the Creator, you're destroying it with your own hands by following those negative thoughts, following the fears of those ones that are guiding you, that are chasing you and blaming you and criticizing you because they have not learned yet how to give themselves a break, how to breathe, how to live life of faith. To live life of faith it's to know that Hashem, He is with you. He loves you, an unconditional love. He revealed Himself to us in the desert when we were empty-handed, when we were so poor, when we were not learned, when we were not pure, when we were not qualified, when we were not even awake. We were refugees that just been redeemed out of a horrific hundreds of years of slavery after being chased, after being accused and murdered, been, been, been destroyed for generations under the horrible government of Egypt of 3,000 years ago. 
like Holocaust refugees, we found ourselves naked in the desert, standing like that. And in that moment of poverty, without a house, without Torah, without a land, without nothing, Hashem revealed Himself to us and shown to us His kindness and called us His children and gave us the Torah and gave us the Shabbat and revealed godliness in such high way that never been revealed before only because that we were humble. So today we should humble ourselves as well if we want to receive the Torah. Instead of trying all of the time to chase after some imaginary dream of being righteous and being rich and being successful and being learned and I don't know what we want to achieve, we need to humble ourselves and to accept on ourselves the real yoke of heaven, to connect ourselves to the truth. What is the truth? Reality. You are married. Now have a relationship with your partner. Now you have children. Face it. Spend time. Teach your children. We're not building buildings up in the sky. We're putting the foundation. We're stabilizing our houses. We're trying to build things from the beginning. You have a house to take care of. You want to learn Torah? Great. Bring the blessing into your house. How are you going to bring it into your house? If you're learning Gemara, Masechet Betza, in the Beit Midrash, your wife is asking you, okay, what were you learning? What were you doing in the Beit Midrash? Oh, I learned an amazing Tosfot. You don't know, the Tosfot is saying, Makshe'a Tosfot, Kushiata Tosfot, on the, on, the, on the Tana, the Amora is saying, and this and that, and the arguing, and there is a Plugta, and there is a Machloket. She's looking at you like, what in the world are you doing over there? How can it be that you live your life? That's what she's thinking to herself. How can it be that the one that I chose to live with, he now acts like a zombie. He lives in some kind of fantasy, in an imaginary <coughs> world, somewhere over there, over the rainbow, in the Beit Midrash. And they're discussing situations that took place 3,000 or 2,000 years ago. And my sink is leaking for three months. And he doesn't give me a hand. The kids are screaming and climbing the walls. And I can't deal with them. And where is he? Where have you been? And now that's reality. The sink is leaking. The kids are climbing on the walls and trying to break through the windows. And someone needs a hand. Someone needs a father. Someone needs someone to be responsible and to help. Now, because that you went to the Beit Midrash <coughs> and you learned Torah, but you still didn't learn how to translate the Torah to the language of reality of your wife, of your house, of your life. So when she's asking you, what have you learned in the Beit Midrash? You don't need to quote the Tosfot, the questions that been asked in the Beit Midrash on the sugya that been learned in the Gemara. You, while learning, had a mistake. What was your mistake? <coughs> Your mistake was that while you were learning, you thought to yourself that you are one of the Baalat Safot. You thought to yourself that you are part of this thing. You thought to yourself that you are now achieving things. You're learning the sugiya. You're understanding. You're clarifying things. You had an existence. Your conclusion in the end of learning was supposed to be, who am I in the world to have that merit to sit and learn Tosfot? Who am I in this world to be so lucky to have the ability to spend five minutes in front of an open book? I'm so lucky. And if you would learn with that attitude, 
when you would make your first steps into the house and your wife would ask you, hi, how was it in the bakery lash? You would have so much to give her. You would smile to her and you would tell her, I am the most luckiest person on earth. Hashem taught me Torah today, and I came to share it with you. We're so lucky, my wife. I love you. Thank you, Hashem, for having this wife. Thank you, Hashem, for having this house. And then, in that situation, if she would tell you, I need help, the sink is leaking, you would go like the luckiest person on earth to take care of that problem, and you would do it with joy, with a happy heart and a wishing soul to help your wife to be a partner in the house and then the system would work and the machine would run and you would be able after 10, 15 minutes or 30 minutes to go and learn again. And no one would mind because the amounts of light that you brought from learning to in the Beit Midrash into the house made their effect and illuminated your house. It's worthy for the wife to see that her husband is coming like a shining angel from the Beit Midrash. She loves him. She's so happy. It's amazing. Fantastic. And it happened only because that he learned it with humility. And you don't need to come excited every day like a clown. You can come also with a broken heart. Today, from the learning, I realized that we're not taking care enough of our brothers, of our sisters. We need to spend more time thinking, what can we do for others? I think that we need to think about this. If you will bring the truth into your house, the learning will bring results, will bring sweet taste into the fruits of your actions, and it will be sweet to the ones that will enjoy them. But if you're bringing bitterness because you're not catching the message of the Creator in the learning, because you're not humbling yourself, because you're choosing arrogance, you're choosing pride, you're choosing the war, the battle of Torah, you want to succeed, you want to be respected, that's why all the pure water are running between your fingers. And you're coming home after spending six hours of learning Torah empty-handed. She's looking at you. I was spending six hours without my husband. And then he came in a worse depression than he was when he left the house. So why am I sending him to learn Torah? That he will be miserable and will bring that sadness back to the house? Are that, that, is that the, the, the will of Hashem? Is that the purpose of Am Israel going and learning Torah in the Beit Midrash, in the Beit Knesset. That's not the purpose. The purpose of Hashem, of us going learning Torah, is that we're going to attach ourselves to Him, to ask Him, what can we do for you? What do you want us to do? What is the mission of our lives? If Hashem brought you together to build a house, to have a family, to have a community, to have a whole group of people that wants to do good. You need to do that good. You need to be awake to the needs of your brothers and sisters, of your partners, of your family. You need to be awake. You need to be a man. You need to be strong. You need to be part of it. And to deliver the light of truth into the hearts of those that are surrounding you and to shine into their hearts the light of Hashem, the light of kindness, the light of justice, the light of faith. And the faith is in the nights, in those challenging hours, in those hard hours where our faith is being challenged. That's where we need to show our faith and our loyalty to the Almighty to talk to him and to ask from him like the King David, that he was the master of prayer, that he was the king of Israel. He was such a learner that he was learning in one night from midnight till dawn an amount of Torah that a scholar, an ancient scholar, a Tana, in the days of Rabbi Meir Baal Anes, of Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, they would learn in 100 years. 
in a lifetime. They would learn the amount that King David was learning in one night, from midnight till dawn. He was such a genius, and he was still going with his simplicity in the nights to the fields, standing in his porch, on his porch, and calling Hashem in his language, telling the Creator, Adricheni ba'amitecha, please guide me in your path, in the path of your truth. Lamdeni chukecha, teach me your rules. Why should he pray for those things? He knows all the Torah by heart. He knows all the verses and all the conclusions, all the shakla betarya and all the questions and all the answers. He knows the Gemara better than the Tanaim and the Amoraim. He knows it all. But he knows something else. He knows that when you want to be close to Hashem, you need to be humble. Because Hashem is greater than the greatest righteous ones of them all. Moshe learned his humility from the Creator. The wisest ones receive their wisdom from the Creator. He's the one that gives wisdom. He's the one that gives success. He's the one that gives wealth to the rich. He's the one that gives health to the healthy ones. He's the one that makes everything run in this world. But he's making sure to hide himself in the same time. That we will work hard to find him. And to think to yourself that by sitting with an open book and reading and reading and reading, by that you're going to find him, you're just making it too easy. It's not going to work. Eight hours of learning a day will not going to bring you close enough to the Creator. In Zoya Vodashe Balev, you need to work a job, a hard work on your heart. Zoyit Filah, it's prayer. You need to pray. The Gemara is asking what Rabbi Akiva was doing that opened the path for him. A 40 years old person that was an Ama Aretz that didn't know how to read the Aleph Bet, the first ABC of Hebrew language. He didn't know how to read. He didn't know the basic halachot. He didn't know how to read Shmona Esre, how to pray from the Sidu, how to light the candles of Shabbat. He didn't have a clue in Judaism. He was 40 years old when he started his tshuva process to come back to Hashem. And he became a giant in the world of Torah, in the world of Judaism. He became the rabbi of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. He became the biggest one of them all that opened the path to all of us until today. What was he doing that opened that path for him, the Gemara is asking. And the answer is that he was going and learning, but except of that, he was also going and crying and praying. Rivers of tears he cried from his eyes. He was crying rivers of tears. He was asking from that one that the wisdom belongs to him. You need to ask from Hashem, Hashem bring me closer to you. Let me know what really is needed from me to do. What really is the mission of my life? What do you want from me, Hashem? I have my wife, I have my children, I have my challenges. What do you want from me? I have my husband, I have my children, I have my challenges. What do you want from me? Those are the questions that will bring you closer to Hashem. Because Hashem is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. So when you will ask Him the real questions of your life, about your life, what is really needed and required, expected from me, you will be answered. When you will ask the questions that are coming out from your heart, your prayers will be answered. All your prayers will be answered when you will call Hashem with the voice of truth, the voice that will come out of your broken heart, that will share the truth, the real challenges of your life. When you will express your thoughts 
and your emotions and you will ask for the right guidings, you will be answered. Answered. Also going to answer. Someone asked me if I'm a Baal Tshuva once, so I told him, yes, I own the answer. I know how to answer every question. No problem. Today, my wife and I, we spoke about this issue. I'm speaking from the heart. That's the way that I'm teaching. That's the way that I'm giving my classes. And people are telling me after the class, I felt like you were talking directly to me. How did you know my thoughts? How did you know I was exactly what was uh, what that I was thinking about and this and that? And the truth is that I don't know those things. Hashem is just helping me because, and based on that, I I built all of this class of tonight, like that I said in the beginning, that Hashem is tying all the tips, all the edges, all the corners of the universe, and he brings it all to become one. I'm going through my own life, and when I am bringing the points of truth from my life to the table, so then it's going to link, it's going to connect the points of truth that you bring from your totally different life of mine. And those points of truth will connect themselves together. The truth, truth will make us one. The truth is uniting us. The truth is bonding us. So when I'm pushing myself to be honest and to say the truth, I'm enjoying the kindness of Hashem that gives me the ability to help with that truth as a reward to my effort of finding the truth in my life, to be rewarded, to have the ability to let you enjoy from that truth as well, and to let you find an access in your own life to your own truth, to find the light in your private lives, in your houses, with your families, with your beloved ones, that the light of Hashem will illuminate and shine in your houses. That's my prayer. And I bless you all to find that true happiness of finding the real Creator in your own houses with your beloved ones and not giving up on them ever. Keep on praying for them. Keep on loving them. Reminding yourselves on how cute and how innocent and how nice they are. And don't let the difficulty of the challenges separate you from them. The fact that it's hard is not a reason to give up. It's a reason to push forward and to work harder and to ask for more help and more assistance. If this goal is important to you, if it's something that you dreamt of all of your life, you will find a way to achieve it. So make it important. Focus on that. Remind yourselves of the good points of your family members, of your beloved ones. Remind yourselves how different you want to be from your parents. Your parents couldn't play with you. Your parents couldn't spend time with you. Your parents never had the time to listen to you fully all the way. So break that pattern and go and sit with your child for 20 minutes. Go ask your child how is he. Go hug your child. Go do things with your family. You never saw your parents smiling to each other and happy to each other, only criticism and arguments. So break that pattern and go and sit with your wife in the kitchen. Go and stand by her and help her give her a hand. Waste 20 minutes of your life and help your wife. You're going to see that those were the most precious 20 minutes you ever had in your life. You're going to find the grace and the kindness and the miracle of Hashem in life. You're going to understand how the real righteous people was growing and and achieving their high, high levels by taking care of the small details of them all. It's not that you don't have time to fix that dripping faucet. It's not the time that you lack of. It's the heart that you lack of. You don't care. You care about yourself and your issues. And it's based on your fears. 
and negative thoughts and weird bent guidings that you receive during your life by people that have not faced their own life challenges and have not broke yet all their foreign negative patterns and they themselves still didn't solve the problems of their lives and they're not happy so they cannot guide you yet so when you don't have the right guiding you need to guide yourself you need to find a path you need to go and call Hashem you need to call Hashem it's also a free call so you know enjoy the bounty you can talk to him full reception I don't need no Wi-Fi okay now after bringing you to the worst depression that you can ever <laughs> imagine to yourself you're gonna fall into tonight I'm gonna thank you for listening to me I'm blessing you I pray for you I love you I wish you all the best and I know that it's in your power to face the life challenges and if you will be people of truth, the truth will be revealed to you and you will find easy and quick and pleasant solutions to the most domestic problems that you have in your lives. You will realize that you never had problems. You will see the blessing of Hashem. Suddenly, wow, it's so nice here, so great here. So you're going to enjoy your life. You will you will find taste and reason and purpose and satisfaction from small things in life and then when you will go and learn and then when you will go and pray your prayers and your learning will be blessed and answered and you will see complete salvations and redemptions in your houses and in your families and in your spiritual lives thank you very much and be well and be strong and good luck we hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.